Hey guys, it's Tom. Welcome back to Maine Angler 1969. Um, today I'm going to show you how I pour my poison tail jig heads. Um, I got the do it mold. Um, Lee melting pot. I got all my uh, lead in there ready melted and ready to pour. I've done a couple so far. Um, half ounce and three eighths is what I basically pour. So I'm going to show you today how I pour the jig heads powder coat them and then from there I'll show you the process of putting the um, skirt together the hooks on and all that for a finished product so first of all I'm going to take the candle and I learned this off of uh, that guy skimpy um, basically just uh, blackening your mold it allows the lead to come out a little bit easier so I'm just going to go up underneath it little bit like I said we're doing three eighths and half ounce jig heads today so and I've already like I said I've already poured a couple so the mold basically is warm so now I'm going to put in a wire form 130 which is for the 3 8 ounce head and then you also want a 155 for the half ounce head so got the wire forms in there close it make sure they stay in place I'm doing is filling the mold up now and that quick so you can open it up I wear one glove on this hand so I can grab a hold of them but basically use pliers to get them out of the mold so all I gotta do is pull that spur off the top. So I just go ahead and take some cutters, grab a hold of it, and I just wiggle it. It's soft enough to where you can just wiggle it off. Drop that back in the pot. Wiggle the next one off. Drop it in the pot. So there's your poison tail jig head um, I'll go back with the uh, file and I'll clean it up smooth it down on top where that spur was so I'm going to make a few of these up and then I'll come back and um, show you the powder coating process alright guys I'm back I'm going to show you how I powder coat these um, this is my fluid bed I do have a video on how I made this um, right now I'm doing watermelon so I got my heat gun on the forceps with the jig in it. I'm just going to heat it up for about 15 20 seconds. Once you heat it up, about 20, you know, 15 seconds, then I'm going to dip it into the fluid bed. You don't want to get it too hot where it smokes, but you want to get it good enough to where it'll coat the, the powder and melt the powder towards the head. Just keep rotating it, bring it over, dip it, bang it, and that's what she looks like. And while it's in here, what I do, since I cut the eye open to get my blade in, since I still have this um, in the forceps, I just kind of clean up where the... Um, opening is because once you bake this it's going to be a nightmare so this is a 3 8 and what I do is right at the bottom there I'll go ahead and cut that and 
And what that allows me to do is gives me a little opening for the, uh, the blade. You don't need a whole lot. Go back into the forceps. Heat it up. And that's all she is. You're gonna get a, a sheen on it. It's hot enough, it's not smoking, but yet it kinda makes a smooth coat. And like I said, once you put it in the oven, you'll bake it for 20 minutes on 350 degrees, and that'll harden that up even more. Okay guys, next step into this is um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be putting the shaky uh, blade on uh, the head of the jig so have a little opening there where I cut it so that just allows me to slide this right in there flip it over like that and then I'll take my needle nose and all I'm going to do is give that a crimp down crimp it down and then I'll epoxy around it um, once I do the head then I'll also epoxy around that to seal it up a little bit better but like I said um, if you go on YouTube to uh, that guy Skimpy he did a test on how strong it takes this to open and I think it's around 47 pounds so I don't think we'll have to worry about that coming open and then one last thing that we're going to do to this before we go to putting the skirts and everything on and that is to get one of the uh, dual locks so the dual locks will come in from the back and snap this Come in from the back. Take it over, bend it down so you can get it into the other hole. Like so forth. Lock it up and you're all set. Now we just got to go uh, and put the skirt on it. I'm going to go ahead and epoxy this. I'm not going to record epoxying it. But I'll epoxy the whole head, let it dry overnight, make sure it's cured, and then I'll go and start putting the skirts on them. So once I get all these done, I will come back, show you the skirt process, putting the hooks on and everything, and the final project of the uh, bladed jig once I get done. So till next time, tight lines, see you later. Welcome back to Main Angler 1969. Um, today what I'm going to do is finish up the chatterbait, uh, putting the skirts on and everything and showing you how I'm going to do that. So what I got is the jig head. Um, I'm going to do a green pumpkin with some black, about a half a strip. Um, there's 22 strings in a strip. I'm using 11 there. Um, a darker green pumpkin here. It's 22 strands. And the green pumpkin with a little bit of black flake in it. 22 strands. So total of about 56 strands, 55 strands total on this. Um, so let's get to it. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. So first of all, I'm going to put the green pumpkin on. The little handy tool here uh, find about halfway point stick it in through there then I'm going to go with the black stick the black on and then the darker green pumpkin
So I'm just going to sandwich them in there like that. I'm going to pull it through the tube. A little over halfway is about where I want to put it so the top kind of hangs down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this ring, this O-ring down there just to hold it in place for right now. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do after that. So once you get that on there, just pull it back through, take it off of there. That's about what your skirt looks like right there. So I'm going to take my jig head. I'm going to take the longer portion. That's going to be the top. That's what's going to lay over. So one is a little bit longer. So I'm going to go in about the middle of it. Push the bait down in there, the head. Push that skirt up above that collar. And then right now I'm just going to cinch it around. I want everything kind of spaced out evenly. That looks good. So the darker green pumpkin is going to be on the bottom. All right, so after I get that done, I'm going to take it. I'm going to get my hook. I'm going to place it in the vise. The reason I'm doing that is just to hold it because what I'm going to do now is take 26 gauge wire. It's just craft wire, 26 gauge. Try to find it in black, but I couldn't, so I could only get silver. I'm going to make a U, and I'm going to come right underneath or right above that rubber collar. And we're just going to cinch it down with the wire. I'm going to do two turns. Sorry if my hand's in the way. So bring that back up and then bring this side up and push them together. And then I'm going to take this collar. Since I got that on there, I'm going to take the collar and I'm just going to slide that down. So just make sure, double check, make sure you got the uh, rubber, the skirting where you want it. So I'm going to twist this wire once. And then I'm going to grab a hold of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on that wire. Don't want to pull too hard. You don't want to cut your rubber in. You just want to cinch it enough to where that's going to hold that rubber. So once you get that cinched up, go ahead and tighten your, your wire, twist it. Take your needle nose or whatever pliers you have. And just give it a few twists. Once you get that, I cut it about a quarter of a, uh, probably about a quarter of an inch. It gives you enough room to uh, bend it over. So it's going to look like that. You're going to have that little nipple sticking up there. And all you're going to do is bend that over with your finger. Take your pliers, needle nose. Cinch it down. Out of the way. And all I do is cut this rubber off of there, that collar. Now, we're going to take the tails. We're just going to cut those down.
let the skirt hang down and get an idea. I just run my fingers straight down it, make sure it's all straight out. So that's the whole process of putting the skirt on. Now, this is a 3 8 uh, jig head, so I'm going to put a 3 out hook on it. Got vector hooks. Awesome hooks, sharp. If you want to check them out, go to vectorhooks.com. They have wide gap hooks on there. They got treble hooks. They got straight hooks, worm hooks, circle hooks, and they're going to be adding more to it. So go check them out at vectors, vectorhooks.com. Flip that over to expose the little clip here. Slide the hook on. Take my needle nose. And all I'm gonna do is bend that hook or bend that wire. That is the total jig right here complete. It's got a 3 aught hook on a 3 8 ounce jig head. Green pumpkin with a black blade. And that's what she looks like. If you guys have any questions about how I did this, um, leave the comments below. Also, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Um, later in the year, I'm going to be adding videos from fun fishing to KBF tournament fishing. Uh, we have a club here in Maine that we're going to have uh, our tournaments coming up uh, beginning in May. And also some other do-it-yourself projects with um, doing things to my kayak, adding things here and there. So I'm going to try to put multiple videos out this year and try to uh, get my YouTube channel up with some more videos. So if you like it, subscribe it. Also hit the notification so whenever I do post one, you'll see the notification come to you to let you know that I did post a video. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, also want to give shout outs to Vector Hooks. Love these hooks. Nice and sharp. Like I said, if you want to see them, go to www.vectorhooks.com. Check what they got out there. And till the next video, tight lines and catch you then.